Hello, I know this isn't normal, but before this video starts, I'd just like to say that it's over 20 minutes long, which is not normal uh, video length for this channel. So why don't you support this video and the channel by leaving a like? I would very much appreciate that. Uh, so without further ado, grab yourself a cup of tea and enjoy. Everybody, I'm Lego Separator and welcome back to another Lego video. Now we're in the larger studio today because we've got quite a bit of a large thing to do. We're going to be looking at another set. Set number 60036 from Lego City and it was released in 2014 and it is an Arctic base camp which is pretty awesome. So without further ado, let's just get started. <laughs> This set comes with seven minifigures, and let's have a look at the first one over here. A typical Arctic Explorer with a uh, blue hoodie and white fluff around that as well. We can take that off to have a look at his sparkly face uh, with some orange uh, goggles and a smiley face over there as well. Now, as for his torso, he has some more white fluff, a zip going down the middle. A little uh, communications device, a little arctic logo, uh, some blue gloves contrasting with this orange top. Uh, the legs are printed as well with some buckle design, which uh, these legs are copied over with other minifigures in the set. And at the back, we have a little arctic logo as well. Now, our second minifigure is a similar style explorer. In fact, he has the same hood, same top, and same legs as the first explorer, however, we take his hood off and we have a different sort of face over there, it's got some green goggles uh, with sort of a beard oh, uh, going down his chin over there, and this minifigure is special, yes, this minifigure is special in this set, because in this set, he gets a duplicate. This is exactly the same minifigure, face and all. Uh, this one has some accessories to make it look a bit different, but they're basically Lego twins. They're little Lego twinsies, because they were manufactured the same way out of their plastic. But anyway, let's have a look at the accessories this one has. Uh, we've got sort of like an old style cassette um, print on this video camera that we have over here with a little white lens, a little viewfinder in there as well. Uh, that is a print, by the way. And on his feet, on his feet, he has some snowshoes. Um, yeah, made in brown, which look, you know, like a little... They're basically snowshoes. What else can I say? They can attach to the base of a minifigure's legs, and you can also put them uh, side by side together and put them into an open stud. So moving on to our fourth minifigure. Uh, also another Arctic Explorer, but this one is a female. She has the same buckled legs, however she has a different print on her torso. Uh, the top just with some slight alterations, uh, the little communications device being at the base, not on the chest over here. We also have some darkened out areas for where her slim waist is. Same uh, warm style hoodie and a different face print as well. Uh, some orange goggles but with a nice smiley feminine face there, and around the back we also have a blue strap. So our next minifigure in this set, um, what could I call this person? He has a sort of parka uh, over, a semi-parka over his top over here, but he isn't really fit for Arctic exploration. I'd say he's one of the uh, helpful colleagues, workmen who bring you coffee uh, when you're out in the cold. What do you think? So he's got a, a dark blue cap on the top of his head, a little ribbed over there, we can take that off to have a closer look at his face, which has some orange sunglasses, not goggles, sunglasses, and a very smiley face. Like I said, he has a semi-parka, uh, because his orange sleeves from his orange jumper, which you can see on the print over here, go through the holes. Uh, he also has some blue gloves as well. A little identity badge, just to make sure that you know that this is the guy who brings you coffee in the snow. And he's holding one of these uh, light grey ice picks. We do get one in this set. That's uh, It could also be used as a climbing 
uh, climbing hook as well. He's got some plain dark blue legs, and at the back, he has the big Arctic logo. The last but one minifigure is a helicopter pilot, because we do get a helicopter in this set, but we'll get to that later. Uh, first of all, note he has a half visor helmet, that the visor doesn't go all the way down, it just sort of sits uh, halfway over his eyes or something like that. That's a nice styled black helmet over there. We can take that off to have a look at his face. Nice smiley face, nice smiley minifigures. Um, he's got a woolly brown coat, I should say. It does look like a coat uh, with this fluff design over here and at the base as well. However, he has some orange and blue straps uh, following the colour scheme of the Arctic Explorers. And that follows round to the back where I believe he has a little parachute on his back. Or something else that pilots might have. I'm not really sure. Actually looks kind of uh, warm and fluffy on the back over here. And he's got some uh, plain tan legs. Some black gloves on his hands. And that just goes about it for our high flying pilot. And last but not least we get the last but not least minifigure. Which is kind of special. He's a scientist with a magnifying glass. And that magnifying glass is... A magnifying glass because you can magnify his face and also you know to research samples and stuff like that yeah anyway anyway so first things first he has a white lab coat on top of an orange jumper he has plenty of details on his front for instance like a little arctic logo stuck underneath his coat some pens in his white lab coat a little ID badge to point out that this is the crazy scientist. His hair matches up especially with his face print, his hair being sort of very close, uh, bearing slick brown hair, as if dark brown hair, as if he had just uh, lacquered on some hair gel onto that to keep it nice and down. Can't have spiky hair being a scientist, can you? And his face print consists of some square glasses on his face, a nice cheesy smile, and some brown uh, sideburns of his beard going round the bottom, and, and brown moustache, and brown bushy eyebrows as well. Some plain blue legs, and round the back, yet again, the Arctic logo. Grrr. Okay, this set also comes with a large animal, a polar bear done in white, because... Yeah, it is a polar bear, and these large animals tend to have two points of articulation, as is true with this polar bear. So first of all, the base of his legs turn up like this, so he can uh, reach for the stars. And we can bend that down, and the other point of articulation is in his neck over here, his neck joint. Um, sort of like off symmetry with the legs as well, one of them put fo more forward than the other, and the back legs. All of the legs can stick on top of studs, and he's also got some empty studs up there, in case you want to be riding this polar bear. And some very nice prints done for the nose and eyes over here, and his mouth can hold something. And he also has a little tiny tail on the back. Now this Arctic Exploration Team get themselves a husky sled. Yes, with four unique huskies. So first of all, let's talk about the huskies themselves. They're all attached onto this very long bar uh, to pull it along just like so. And there's a little joint in there to let it move freely as well. So you can replicate some husky uh, turning. <laughs> some husky turning. Now each one of these huskies are one piece. Let me just take one out uh, to give you a closer look. And each one of them have been sprayed, I believe, completely at random. So each husky is painted a little bit differently to the others. Kind of gives it that unique, oh, I'm a different than you husky. Now moving on to the sled over here, it's got kind of some nice details. Let me just unclip these huskies so I can uh, move it around a little bit better. So first of all, its primary use is to carry this big brown crate in the middle. And this big brown crate at the moment has some fish in it, but you can use uh, any sort of accessories you like. I mean, it's cargo. Right, taking that out of the way, we can see uh, the base of the sled has some black, special black stylized pieces over here to replicate the sleds. And we also have some jumper plates to stick your own cargo in there as well. I like these little lights here at the front as well to uh, light up the way, even if you have to travel in the dark. Uh, we've got a little antenna dish for communications uh, clipped onto the side. And on the other clip, yes, we do have a fishing rod. We can unclip that, make sure that I unclip the other part of it. Now let me just move that out of the way so we can have a look at this fishing rod. Uh, it's got a little orange, what, what do they call these? A little winch? 
sort of thing. I don't know, made with some Lego string, reaches out quite a far away, we've got a little yellow bait on the end, and it can be used to, I don't know, catch some fish. Now as for the rest of the sled, yeah, it's got a little clip over there that you can uh, clip other accessories, and we have, I suppose, the stand-up seat, because uh, this is designed for a minifigure to stand up, they've got two little handholds over here, which they can hold, and finally we have this sticker over here, a little silver radio, and a GPS radar thing. Here's the helicopter that I was telling you about and what Mr. Ace Helicopter Pilot is going to be flying about. Now this isn't just a helicopter, it's a helicrane. I believe that's what you call those helicopters that have a little crane on the back. So, first of all, let's break down this style. So orange and white, of course, uh, because this is coloured for the Arctic exploration. It's got one of these cockpits over here, one of these uh, wonderful corrugated cockpits, which generally opens up, uh, you might need to swizzle around the rotors a little bit just to get in there. Now, the seat inside, pretty basic, uh, with a little lever over there as well, uh, the little, what do they call them, joystick, yeah, flight joystick, cover that down, nice styling over here with these um, roof tiles, by the way, this is unscripted, uh, I'm just trying to figure out what's going on as it goes along, anyway, Dual blade rotor made out of some base plates and joining with a tile. Exhaust pipes over there, nice touch. Uh, some guide lights, one done in green and one done in red. Those are tubular pieces. The landing skids are made out of helicopter blades, I believe. Well, they could have been originated from something else or something like that. They're done in black, they're used for landing. And at the very back we have this winch which has some very defining stickers on these uh, round uh, knobbly bricks to show that you can bend it either way to lower and raise the winch. This winch, well, it's a winch, it's got a hook on the end, you can pick things up with it, and we do have something specific that we can pick up with this helicopter. However, let's just note at the back over here that we have extra stickers, one on this side and one on this side of the tail fin with this little very teeny tiny three blade rotor, um, you know, to be the um, tail rotor. <laughs> and for carrying, look at this, a net, yes, a Lego net. Uh, with a little attachment over here, so you can hook that over here like so, and wrap the net around the little hooks. This is a four-handled hook piece, and we've got an ice boulder over there. We can unlock the ice boulders later, and generally all we need to do is put some stuff inside here. Let's put our helicopter pilot. Let's give him a ride. Um, just loop these netting over here. These are, by the way, made out of the same Lego strings used for the winch and for the fishing rod. There we go, a nice little net, hold up like that, just attach it to the hook over here, and hopefully fly away with it. And for any dimensionalists, dimensionalists out there, this is only about 15 centimeters long, as, about as big as my hand. Now let's just cover a few smaller things before we move on to some big things. So first of all, two ice boulders and a snowmobile. So these ice boulders are made with this light blue, translucent sort of uh, frosty color, uh, these come in two pieces, fit together with a little ice crystal on the inside. There are three in this set, two of them have been used uh, for these boulders over here. They're pretty shiny, pretty shiny. They, they can be just stuck inside there or filtered about loosely and they also have studs on them so you can, you know, stack, stack them boulders. Now, for the snowmobile, it's only about, uh, I believe, about only eight centimeters long by my eye or something like that. Pretty compact snowmobile and that's a good reason why it's so compact which we'll show you later. Uh, it's got one seat over here with this with this uh, little handlebar piece, little handle over there as well to be a backrest, little grill there to be the engine. Uh, underneath over here we have some inverted slopes and some inverted tiles as well to let it slide across the ground easily. By the way, these uh, snowmobile skids are loose, so they can uh, spin around like this, or they can go up and down hills freely, a bit like suspension, you know what I mean? Now, on the front over here we have a print, a printed slope, and that has the Arctic logo stuck on there. And I like this little uh, spotlight at the front as well, this chubby little spotlight 
uh, done in white with a clip attached to the barb there. And we also have some nice angular orange pieces too. And uh, a cheese slope underneath there to be a sort of bumper. Now we move on to the big stuff over here. This caterpillar track truck with these individual caterpillar track pieces. Yes, I know, it looks pretty awesome. With a drill on the back of it as well. Gotta get that good silver drill. So first of all, let's just break down the sizes. So, uh, in length, it's about pretty small, about 13 centimeters, just as big as the helicopter's length. However, it is pretty wide for a Lego vehicle, about 11 centimeters across to the uh, very utmost edges of these caterpillar tracks. And I'll cover the caterpillar tracks first to get them quickly out of the way. So they've got quite a unique installation for them. You've got these rather large black cog pieces, six of them, three on this side and three on the other. And these lock into the caterpillar track pieces. Uh, these are 22 on this side and 22 on the other, which all need to be assembled together, clip and uh, handle technique. And they, they make a rattling noise when they turn as well. A very distinct rattling noise, especially on here. Now, these are plastic, hard plastic caterpillar tracks, which means that uh, something like this table could be a little bit difficult to rotate them. That's why underneath here, we have a little helper wheel. Now, some people will call it a cheater wheel, but I'll call it a helper wheel, because it helps if you do not have carpet to roll this thing on. This has some uh, rubber friction in there. It's one of those larger wheels attached to the middle cog pieces So when it rolls on the ground, it can turn absolutely everything. So with that out of the way Let's concentrate on the details of the cab over here So first of all handles for sort of bumper and hook to be winched about as well uh, for these uh, translucent white studs uh, to be headlamps or we've also got some headlamps over here and some extra ones on top of here just in case you need some more a grill element at the front and some studs and slopes at the front to give it a nice styling we've got two opening doors one on either side a translucent a blue windscreen at the front adjustable lights at the top as well now over here on the sides we have space for accessories uh, and this one features a little handheld radio set and on the other side, eh, that clip is clipped to this long antenna piece over here for communications. Now, the roof of this opens up. First of all, we also have another satellite uh, antenna dish on the top over here, done in white. The roof comes off just like so. That's got a sticker on it, the Arctic logo, done in large. And over here in the, over here, in the cab, let me see if I can actually get good angle of that with the lighting uh, we have one little gray steering wheel on the inside of there and space to sit one mini figure we also have some extra orange tiles going round to the rear and at the very back of the cab we have two of these black smokestacks because this is a big diesel mean lean mean diesel guzzling machine <laughs> now at the back of here we have this crane arm with this silver drill for drilling things and this rotating block at the back as well. So uh, let me just get ourselves a test subject. This Arctic Explorer over here. Let's sit him into the seat over here. So there's a white chair over here uh, on this rotating block and that has a little sticker. Wait, actually, that has a little sticker uh, with some computational capabilities I should say it looks like a calculator and a couple of dials basically let's sit our person back in nice angled pieces over here some orange and some extra headlights there as well so you can see what you're doing now let's get on to the actual drilling mechanism so first of all crane arm done in yellow two pieces with locking articulation uh, joints and they have stickers on them What's more, they have stickers on them. This one says Max Dash 550 RPM, which I believe stands for revs per minute. Um, this one is just plain uh, black and yellow striping. And at the end of it, we have the silver drill head, uh, which is free spinning. You can spin it just like that. Wow, it actually spins pretty fast uh, for something uh, of this size. 
uh, that's attached to another articulation joint so you can really really point it in different many different ways and this could be used i don't know to drill open ice blocks or something like that uh that's attached to a black articulation joint and over there which unfortunately my one is a little bit has has suffered a little bit of wear and tear and doesn't really hold the drill arm any longer but doesn't matter this whole thing can rotate in different angles so you can even drill something which is nearly nearly at the front of the truck which is pretty cool and at the back over here we have a few little extra designs we have some brake lights just to make sure that it's road legal and there's a little little handle at the back over here and a grill and now it's time to cover the biggest part of the set where the most bricks go into is this large arctic base camp over here done on stilts nice pro nice touch over there so as i draw the 360 over here to see all of the wonderful details around it first of all it is enclosed on all four sides um <laughs> to keep out that cold arctic wind it's got plenty of windows and other forms of details all the way around now as for dimensions, width over here is approximately 23 centimeters, and the actual length of this is 13 centimeters. However, this conveyor belt over here can reach it up to 23 centimeters as well. And the height of this thing going right up to the antenna over here, which you can't even see because it's uh, pretty tall up, which is about 24 centimeters as well. So, pretty decent big build. Now this Arctic Base Camp is made of two sections. First one over here is the lab, and this over here is the garage and living quarters. We'll get to this secondarily, but first of all we'll just note that it has an Arctic Dash 1 sticker over here and a little window inset over here. Now let's concentrate over here, which uh, also has another sticker on this brick over here, the Arctic logo, and this sort of special rounded design to the base lab so first of all we've got windows over here which we've got plenty of windows on the other side as well however this side of the camp opens up like that see nice and simple it's got some stiff joints in there so it can hold its position it opens up like this and this section here as well or you can close them both you can open one you can open the other one just like this and you can open both of them as well nice design nice color design with this uh, white stripes a dark gray stripe at the base orange orange over here as well yeah and a rail over here as well just to make it a little bit easier to open up these doors now the inside of the lab is a little hard to get to so that is why I've taken the camera and uh, give it a little bit of mobility. Ah, so we can see what's inside there. So first of all, on the very far left, let me open this door to put my finger in there. On the very far left, we have a little coffee cup on this very long table. Now, we have some stickered uh, computer screens, one over there and one over here. This one shows a little radar dish. Uh, and it seems like we've got a large helicopter sensed on the radar as well, a few little buttons on the bottom. The other computer screen shows uh, one of those crystals uh, with some blue markings around it, maybe some sort of scientific readout or something like that. And at the very f middle over here, we have a microscope. Now, it does look like a funny little microscope because I couldn't find the goggle piece, or rather the viewfinder piece put on top of it basically a piece of light gray goggles should uh, light gray binoculars should go over here but I couldn't find it but anyway you can get the idea and we have one other of those silver crystals stuck over here note as well these little yellow cheese slopes on the sides that help the main doors from from you know straddling inside the base and one pretty nifty thing you can do as well is to just open this door like a spaceship now here is the other section of the Arctic Base Camp, which is the little garage over here uh, with opening doors and stuff like that. In the build, you actually build these two sections separately and then they're connected with some joints. Now let's have a look at the top first so we get that over with. So first of all, we have these special sort of construction style element pieces done in white with some printed solar panels. Sorry, not printed. You put the stickers on them. These stickered uh, solar panel pieces to uh, get some energy 
some very renewable energy. We have a little flag piece over here with the Arctic logo stuck on both sides. Those are stickers as well. A little antenna piece and this, this adjustable white dish with this little knob here and that just swings around. All of this done on white and red uh, caution pieces and now let's move on to the actual garage. So this front drops down just like so. It's got some clips and handles and it drops down just like this. Note that it has another sticker on it, the Arctic logo stuck on a tile which is a pretty nice addition in this large grey door and as well these sliding door element pieces over here just to close things up. That drops just down like that and we have some garage space in there. Also, before we move on to what you store in the garage over here, and what this ramp is for, we also have this little roof element piece at the top over here. Can you can you please define your attention over to here? We have another one of those little lamps on ratchet connections, and that opens just like so. To let a little bit more light in, you can see a little bit that there's something back there, but we'll get to that when we go around to the other side. First of all, snowmobile time this snowmobile can be stored into the base just like so it's got some little yellow and gray tiles as well as some special panel pieces to hold the back of the snowmobile into place just like so we can close that up and hey it's a snowmobile that fits inside a lego building and we can just fall down the ramp over here and zoom off just like so yeah pretty nifty feature now over here on the side we have some plain orange, some windows, some white stripes and some dark grey at the base over here. And at the back we have an almost identical, well I would actually say identical, door system to us in the front. So this ramp folds just down like that and this roof section opens up as well to reveal the inside of the back area. <laughs> so first things first we have this little table over here with a little red coffee cup there as well and two brown chairs. You know, kind of a nice homely sort of feeling. This is part of the living quarters. Maybe we can put down one of those uh, one of those helper colleagues who bring you coffee out in the snow. You can sit down over here and have a nice chat with someone else. Now over here on the side we have a special sticker over there. Let's just pull this down to have a closer look at that. That's a sticker and it shows a fem a, 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 a mum, a mummy min mini figure over here and a sketch of a little boy over there as well waving. This might be a photograph belonging to one of the Arctic explorers thinking about their wife and child all the way back at home and how they're missing them. Some cute little story hidden in there. And at the back over there you can see that they have an old-fashioned TV set uh, with a little antenna stuck on the top adjusted at an angle. Maybe want some old uh, t TV tapes or maybe play some old computer games as well. Behind the chair we have a little uh, radiator made out of some made out of... it's, it's hard to see because uh, of the light. Oh there we go now we can see it. It's got some uh, dark, uh, some translucent orange pieces, some black pieces as well to make a nice cozy looking radiator. So here we have everything arranged and one last thing uh, this set also came with this plain Lego separator as well. Uh, to join up with all the orange stuff over here and to help with taking apart some of the pieces as well. This was a big set. And I think that just goes about it. That is the end of our video. So I hope to show you more in the future. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope this inspired you about your own Arctic adventures. And until next time, happy building!